uh, get started. Michael, how would you assess your side performance today? Um, I think we showed a lot of courage, a lot of determination. Um, we stayed into the we stayed in the game against a fair bit of adversity. And then when the moments came for us to really get back in the game, put pressure on England, we made some mistakes and uh, released that pressure and they were able to capitalise on some of those errors. So fair to say you didn't get the rub of the green on some occasions? Over Mate, the bounce of the ball and... Like the I said, things. we had opportunities, you know, and uh, they're the things that are in our control, you know, those opportunities, you know, no matter what the conditions. But we are, we're doing everything we can to become a team and a, and a nation plays rugby, no excuses, you know, so we can, we can let that echo down through all of our footy. So we got a, we had opportunities to get ourselves back in that game and, uh, and we did it. We tried to play out of it at the end, made a few errors again and that allowed the score to go where it went. Of those three marginal TMO calls, were there which, which one or which two or three were particularly restricted? Well, I don't know. I'm not really ranking them, you know what I mean? It's not the Academy Awards. Um, mate, I don't know. I suppose the... <clears throat> not sure who the team I was. Probably should have found out his name, but... Uh, it's interesting that on the... Images. I, I'm just not sure about the process, about how many replays for one incident and how many replays for another, I suppose. So, I don't know. He probably just makes his own mind up, wherever he wants. You looked pretty annoyed just before half-time. Was that with the decisions or with the discipline of your side? Oh, man, I couldn't remember exactly if he meant it. Uh, he went about when before half-time. Or just after the uh, second sim bid? Well, no, oh, obviously you're not real happy when your team goes down to 13. And, you know, like, yeah, whatever. No, you're not real happy. So you've got to try and rearrange as well. So you go down there, you're obviously steaming, but then you can try yourself on the way down and say, right, what are the changes I need to make to make this work? Because we had a key person in the backfield, right, and there was maybe two or three minutes to go before half time and a score then would have really hurt us. So we needed to, they would have known the smart kicking team, they would have known we would have been missing a player in the backfield. Plus one of our, we already had to rearrange our D when, when Michael got uh, put in the sim bin. So just want to make sure that we're in position. So you, you it's not, it's totally normal to get angry, but you've got to clear your head there straight away and then make the, like positional changes required to uh, try to cut off, you know, the possible attacks. In the end, we, we were able to, I think, stave, stave off those attacks and we went into the break six now. Michael Hooper, what was your interpretation of, of your try? Yeah, so I thought, um, you know, obviously offside on the, on the first kick. Well, not offside, I was in front of the, the kicker. I thought, you know, I worked back, hands up in the air, worked back to the point where Marika, who was onside, put me on. Um, and then I've, he's kicked the ball, obviously, and I'm in an onside position. So that's why I went at the ball and carried it over the try line. So I, um, you know, I don't know what I'm meant to do there. If the kick's put from behind me, I'm just meant to stop and not be a part of the game. It's hard when you're going f full pace to, to pull up stumps. So. Um, you know, something you need to look at and, and get better on because I thought it was a great little piece of play from the backs. Michael, um, uh, did Marika get a, a touch on, on, the, on the ball with his boot? On the second one? Uh, no, just on the, uh, on the trial line for your trial just before half time. Uh, when Marika was on, on the second touch, so yeah, was Tavita a, was it Tavita kicked it? Yeah, Tavita kicked it. Yeah, yeah, and then yeah, yeah, he kicked Marika it again. Yeah, back, yeah, without doubt, yeah. yeah. What about your yellow card I think that was? That was accumulation, I think. It was just uh, so the way Ben explained it to me. It was a couple on the run from uh, Malls and then uh, an offside penalty from myself to, so a couple in a row there and I was the bad boy. Yeah, no, that's the difficulty, I suppose, for the players, right? When they see that that's considered offside, but it's pretty obvious when uh, they disallowed the Marika's try 
that the English players were all offside coming back on side. So for the players, it's very hard for them to reconcile, you know, uh, what is on side and what isn't. I suppose that that's that's probably an issue for, for further down the road. Yeah, it's just hard for them in the heat of the game to then decide what's what's on side, what's offside anymore. Did that um, Rika's try was disallowed in the second half? Did that kind of knock stuff out of your head? Oh, we we um, you know, we're all ready to go again. Um, had a couple more chances there after that, and um, you know, no, it didn't knock the. You know, we're, we're just saying it's we're grinding and we're in the fight. You know, so um, you have you have those you have those things in the game, and we'll definitely grow and learn from this as a team. Mike, Mike, Jack, will you, will you speak to anyone from World Rugby or the referee or the referee's no, assessor? Is there any point? No, there's no point. Everybody watched. There's no point. Do you hope your concerns will be addressed? In no, future? I don't hope. There's no, there's no point, mate. Just deal with what we can deal with. That's us. You know what I mean? Can't, can't do. You know. If you have to go, if you have to go and make, a, you know, submissions about that type of stuff, there's no point going. What looked like um, at halftime there? And just reading body language that you were going to go and talk to the referee at, at halftime, and you sent someone from the Wallabies to talk to the referee. Or no, 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 not at all. If anything. Willie G was talking to the referee, and I just didn't want anyone to bother about it. I got him and dragged him away. I said, "Come on, mate, let's get in the dressing room, get our head together, right? And let's get sorted out for next. Because it's not worth it. It's nothing. Nothing's going to come from it. I know firsthand. Don't worry. You know. So uh, let's just get on. I thought in half time in the dressing room we managed ourselves pretty well. Like we had a good, we had a good approach to what we needed to do. We got the first score in the second half. I think even though we were down a man still. So, uh, yeah, we got ourselves back into the contest, you know what I mean? And we just made some mistakes at key moments. And then I suppose it just sort of accumulated, got a bit fatigued at the end trying to play. And I really feel for our supporters, you know, they had a lot of, a lot of well wishes. A lot of people would have got up late in the morning or early in the morning to watch the game. And we certainly didn't want it to pan out for them like that. Is there a fine line, Michael, uh, yourself showing uh, anger and frustration? and then not relaying it on the team. Well, it's not that you didn't relay it on the team, but... No, I don't think it's... What's, mate, at the end of the day, that's my own way of dealing with stuff, right? If I like to get it out and then get on with getting myself on it, I've been able to do it and manage it, you know, that stuff, that's my way. And that, no one can, you know, it's not like it's affecting anybody else. So, you know, there's always the clear messaging going on of what we need, you know what I mean, and what we need to try to do on the field because once the game starts, there's really nothing we can do around that other stuff either. But no, I would say, if anything, at halftime we're relatively calm as, a, as an outfit. You know, even though considering we were down to 13 men, I thought we were, we were pretty good. Well, for when you were coming down in the second half, down towards the yeah, with the words exchanged with a fan, it seems like. No, mate. There's no. I don't know what was this. What rugby's become too? We're just looking for all of that. Is is that really what it is? No, mate. Nothing's talking to. No, there's plenty of fans giving me a god for. I can assure you. Yeah, and not not nice, not pleasant. Right? There's plenty of those, but that's the way it goes, mate. When you put, that's what happens. You know. I know I'm going to walk down the stairs to say something that um, that uh, you're going to cop abuse, but that's the way she rolls. And the reason you go downstairs is because some of these messages, right, that I've got to give around rearranging players. So there's a lot of that going on. Right? I needed to give to Nathan directly so he could make those make those calls. So you know, make them happen. So you know, there's. That's the only thing that's important in the game, is getting the, the on-field situation right, from our point of view. Michael, you had uh, Blake Enover completely from the blue play 61 minutes in the test. What was your appreciation of yeah, uh, his no error game? Yeah, I thought he played pretty well. You know, he did it. He, he, uh, it was a pretty big game to come into, and of course, obviously, with the conditions and more focus on forwards, I thought he did his job exceptionally well. Played probably longer than I thought he would, um, and really got involved in the game, and I really feel for him that his debut was, you know, a loss. But uh, he should be very proud of himself. He's come, he has come out of the blue, and I think he stood up really well in, um, in what was a tough match. Any type five player would have been tested there.
Um, Adam Coleman said before the game that he's going home. Like, yeah. How much good luck is that? Oh, look, that's uh, that's obviously a blow. We didn't go home, but we gave him every chance to play. He's got to go home, get himself a little an operation, a small operation now, and then he'll be back. Should be back for the start of Super Rugby. And I'll probably say Ned Hannigan will be on his way home too tonight or tomorrow, something like that, with his knee. So. Um, you know, it's going to be opportunities for some other guys to get in there and make a name for themselves. Is it a serious injury with the neck? Uh, I'd say it's his knee medial. Not nothing that's going to be hugely catastrophic, I don't think. But it, it, he won't be able to play tomorrow, uh, next week, so there's not much point in him staying on. Would you call it another lock from Australia or...? <sighs> Mate, I don't know. I haven't, haven't thought about it yet. We'll take a bit of stock tonight and see where we go. Last couple of days. Michael, where do you think England are compared to where you played them 12 months ago? I mean, I think they're pretty, pretty. They've been pretty consistent. You know what I mean? The same, it was the same sort of type of game, really. The conditions were a little bit better last year. Again, you know, like we had some opportunities, made some mistakes. Like they put pressure on us, and then, uh, and yeah, it was sort of a bit of the same type of game. So I think they've been pretty consistent. Do you think there's a mental block where it comes to England now? Obviously, it's five wins on the on the bounce for them. No, not really. We, we don't have field block. Right? It's about. It doesn't. Just got to get out there and do your best and try and win, you know. And uh, I think we had a pretty poor run before 2.15 as well against England. I remember sitting in a press conference here in 2.14 saying the same thing as well. All right. Thank you, guys.